moving to France and partnering with the longtime coach of Serena Williams. But already, Patrick Maratoglu is having an impact. He brought that fire back super fast. Um, I didn't really expect that because I'm not very open to people and it's not easy for me to trust in somebody. So when I trust, I can make changes. The way of practice, uh, the way we, he talks actually to me, the whole schedule is like making me be more professional than before. And um, working every day, I think you have a better chance to get to the top back. And uh, I start believing that I still have the game to, to be there. It was just the mentality that at 30, you are just old for tennis and you have to stop. So, yeah. Well, Second life is stunning. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, Patrick with Serena and well, everything she has years, won in her 30s. Years is a little bit too much. <laughs> what do you say to that? We've seen players play the, the best tennis at 30 plus. Uh, Serena, same. Uh, because, yeah, b between 30 and 35 was her, were her best years. So, I think she's fresh. She's... No, but really? Yeah, yeah. I feel she, she's fresh, completely. She's getting started, and... Simona. Yeah, the second, uh, second part of, of the career. So, I'm starting now, yeah. And I have great people around me, so I'm, I'm confident. The way of practice is making me be more professional than before. Working every day, you have, to, you have a better chance to get back to the top. I have great people around, so I'm confident. Now, Simone Halep, she won two Grand Slam titles in 2018 and 2019. She was a world number one at the year's end twice in 2017, 2018. So for 15 years, she wants us to believe that she wasn't quite professional enough to be at the top of her game. Uh, in many ways, people said that she sold her soul for one last ride when she signed on this April, May, with Patrick Mortoglu, the French-based uh, coach and, of course, academy owner. This year she did. She progressed and she was doing better and better. She won the Canadian Open for the third time in August, setting all sorts of records along the way. Uh, and then there was a mysterious retirement in the second round of the Cincinnati Open and then a very, very strange shock loss in the opening round of the US Open. And then she announced she's going to take a bit of time off to get divorced and to have her nose straightened. But back to the beginning and uh, Mr. Moore Togu, okay, when he said that, uh, that he was going to give her full support. Um, and then this happens. So watch, it's an interesting question or an interesting uh, interview after the French Open. Can you explain us exactly what happened out there, what you were suffering from? <laughs> a, little, a little panic attack, let's say. Uh, yeah, uh, it's new and I didn't know how to handle it. Um, it was tough to breathe and uh, I was not very clear in what I'm doing. So it was a very difficult moment. Did you ever suffer that uh, something like that before? No, not really. But I can understand uh, it happened because uh, I had two tough years mm. with injuries and uh, a lot of pressure with pandemic and stuff. So probably today I just uh, broke down a little bit. My brain was not very strong. Uh, but now I'm good and that's why I'm smiling because good. it was really difficult yeah. after the match. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, Simona. Um, I just wonder what's next uh, on, the, uh, on the schedule for you in the, in the coming weeks? Well, when I went uh, out of actually the court and then when I was feeling better, Patrick asked me already where, I, where do I play next week. <laughs> <laughs> so, looks like I'm back, on, uh, back at the work and uh, I have just to get ready in a few days. So. So she had to go off the court um, having a panic attack or supposed panic attack. She was nauseous, she felt dizzy, she had shakes, she couldn't feel her feet is what she said and she couldn't focus uh, for part of the time. Um, but of course her coach, her new coach, said where are you going to play next week? Now I first met Simona in 2009 in Makarska, Croatia. She beat a former player of ours uh, and a guest of our show uh, Ksenia Pervak, she reached the final. She was a runner, she was a grinder, she was a fitness freak, always in top shape. The year before that, she had a breast reduction to help her play better. Tennis was everything for her. So she was only 17, 18 when I first met her. 2010, a player I worked with beat her for the loss of just four games. And this was after a week before she'd lost to another guest of our show, Vesna Galance. 
I met Simone again in 2012, just after Vesna had bounced her at the Moscow Open in two sets. And then in 2013, the last time I met Simona, before she hit the big time, uh, she was again in Moscow, where she didn't drop a set and only lost 15 games in four matches on her way to winning the title and beating the quite interesting and superb uh, Sam Stoser. She blossomed under Vim Fissette, then Darren Cowell, Daniel Dobry, Daryl Cahill again, and Dobry again, before she turned around and reached the end of the line with more title. Roxa Dostat. Roxa Dostat, remember that. This prevents anemia uh, by increasing the production of erythropoietin. Okay, it also stimulates the production of hemoglobin and red blood cells. It's supposed to help battle the effects of chronic kidney disease. It was approved last year for medical use in the European Union. And just before you ask, erythropoietin, where have I heard that before? Why is that familiar to me? It's also known as EPO, the one that Lance took, the one that cyclists love to take, that increases the uh, capacity, increases the performance that you can go longer and you can recover faster. It's the one that the UFC have said it is a scourge in their sport. One of her, sorry, some of the side effects of Roxadustad is uh, pulmonary hypertension or high blood pressure. It's nausea and dizziness and uncontrollable shakes and an inability to focus or to see properly. The signs of a panic attack, the panic attack that Simone felt in the second round loss in the French Open this year. 